So thank you very much for joining today's class. And we are going to discuss another discourse from the Buddhist canon from Tripitaka. Let me first uh, share the uh, text of the sutta that we are going to discuss today for those of you who haven't got it. If you would like to uh, have the copy of the text, please uh, download it from here. And also I have uh, a small presentation too. So I'm going to share both here. the text of the sutta, the translation of the Pali sutta, and also my presentation, which I will be using uh, in our class today. So if anyone would like to have a copy of the text, you can download it from chat box of Zoom. So as usual, I've selected this uh, discourse from the Sutta Pitaka. Today's Sutta is from Anguttara Nikaya. As uh, in this term, uh, we have been discussing suttas from uh, various places of the Sutta Pitaka. Unlike the previous term, in previous term, we uh, were doing suttas uh, in the Majjhima Nikaya only. From the beginning till the middle part of the uh, Majjhima Nikaya, we were uh, discussing the suttas in the order, but this time, in this term, we uh, decided to select random suttas from uh, various parts of the Sutta Pitaka and then discuss them in our class. So for today's discussion, I've chosen this sutta. This is very simple and also very um, short discourse, actually preached by the Buddha and it records uh, one incident which happened at the Buddha's time and also based on that incident, Buddha has taught uh, just one lesson to his uh, congregation, his uh, disciples, monks. And based on that topic and that theme, I would like to conduct today's discussion. So this sutta's name is the Pali name given to this sutta is called Ahirajaka Sutta. And uh, for those of you who are very familiar with the Paritta chanting, and uh, this, is, this is kind of a very uh, practical and familiar thing for the uh, Buddhist practitioners, for the Buddhists, the, uh, the practicing Buddhists, especially Theravada Buddhists who are from Sri Lanka and other uh, Theravada countries, they know Parit, the um, chanting done by the bhikkhus and bhikkhunis and also as well as lay people for the protection for various reasons. Uh, in in uh, Sri Lankan Theravada tradition, we have this book of protection, what we call Piruana uh, Pottuhanse, the book of protection, Parit. Uh, This sutta is included there in the book of uh, protection or in the book of chanting, Piruana uh, Potvahanse. And in that book, this is called Khanda Paritta. Khanda Paritta, Khanda Pali term uh, for the aggregates. And in the Tripitaka, this is recorded by the name of Ahirajika Sutta, which is translated as the snake king. Ahi means the snake, Raja means king. So it is trans translated, the term is translated, the name of the sutta is translated as uh, snake king. Um, but in the book of chanting or in the book of uh, paritta, in the book of uh, protection, this sutta is called khanda paritta, uh, the uh, chanting of aggregates. Um, and this sutta records an incident which happened at the Buddha's time. And based on that, Buddha teaches just one lesson to his uh, bhikkhus and his followers. 
you should do this and you should follow this just in case this happened to you. So that is the uh, teaching, that is the discourse given by the Buddha, uh, by this name, Ahirajika Sutta. And actually, as you, uh, if you have read already the uh, text of the uh, Sutta, uh, you should know that the, the theme of this Sutta is none other than the metta, loving kindness, which is going to be our, uh, the topic of the discussion today as well. So uh, when it comes to metta, loving kindness, uh, as you are aware, there are a number of uh, different discourses given by the Buddha, mainly uh, the discourse on loving kindness, metta sutta, on the theme of metta. And apart from that, there are a number of other different suttas where Buddha has spoken and mentioned and taught how to practice loving kindness and uh, what are the various um, kinds of things that one should do uh, in order to practice loving kindness and as well as its benefits. So that it, the, the, all those things we, we are going to, I'm hoping to uh, bring into the uh, conversation today, the um, different um, aspects of loving kindness and its uh, benefits and uh, the ways in which it should be practiced and how to practice loving kindness as a meditation and as well as um, a way of life or in your day-to-day -day, uh, life. So those things uh, we will be able to discuss in our today's uh, discussion based on this sutta. And the another reason why I chose this sutta is that uh, even though it records a very simple, just one incident, it is uh, it, it reveals. So from that sutta, we can learn some other things which are uh, prevailing at the Buddha's time in uh, basically it is uh, more than 2,600 years ago in, in India. So what was the society like and what were the uh, dangers and difficulties that those uh, people, especially uh, the monks and nuns and uh, the Buddha all together had to face and what kind of things and also how Buddha would advise um, when uh, his assistance is sought by uh, the bhikkhus. Uh, so those kinds of things are also revealed and we can learn from this sutta. So that is why I chose this uh, particular sutta because I thought it would be an interesting um, thing, interesting um, content to discuss with you all. Okay, so with that uh, brief um, introduction, uh, let's go to the text of the sutta. And as I said, this is very uh, short discourse. Uh, this is again recorded uh, amongst the uh, numbered discourses or Anguttara Nikaya, uh, the book of uh, four, Chatukka Nipata, in the section of four. Anguttara Nikaya uh, records, or so it's a collection of uh, sutras or suttas uh, which are or which um, contain uh, the fact, facts or teachings which are um, uh, organized according to the numerical order. So it is again divided into um, 11 sections from first to 11. So this is uh, found or this is recorded, this sutta is recorded in the book of, or in the section of four, because this deals with uh, four um, uh, kinds of uh, snakes, or it mentions four, uh, uh, families of snakes. So that is why this is put uh, in the section of four, Chattukkanipata. And as I said, the Pali term, the Pali name of the sutta is called uh, Ahiraja Sutta. Ahiraja. Ahi again, snake. And Raja is king. So this is called Ahiraja Sutta, the snake king. And for our reading, we are going to, um, uh, there are two uh, translations available on uh, Sutta Central. So for our reading, uh, I'm going to use uh, Viku Sujato's translation, uh, which is translated as the, uh, the snake king, Ahiraja Sutta. This is how it goes. At one time, the Buddha was staying near Savatthi in Jeta's Grove, Anathapindika's monastery. Now at that time, a monk in Savatthi passed away due to a snake bite. Then several mendicants went up to the Buddha, bowed, sat down to one side and said to him, Sir, 
a monk in Savatthi has passed away due to a snake bite. Mendicants, that monk mustn't have spread a mind of love to the four royal snake families. If he had, he wouldn't have died due to a snake bite. What for? The royal snake families of Virupakha, Erapatha, Chabyaputta and Kanha Gotamaka. Mendicants, I urge you to spread a mind of love to the four royal snake families for your own safety, security and protection. So this is how the sutta starts and uh, then followed by uh, a set of uh, stanzas or gathas where again these four uh, um, royal snake families are mentioned and also few wishes that um, both ways wishing um, well-being of them and as well as wishing the protection from them for the person who uh, might be chanting these stanzas. So that is uh, all in this sutta. So as uh, we've just listened, uh, this records an incident of a, a passing away, a death of a bhikkhu at the Buddha's time due to a snake bite. Now, as we, I remember, we uh, this this uh, same same topic came uh, uh, when we were doing uh, another sutta about a few weeks ago, and we were talking about uh, these uh, tropical countries and one of the dangers that people face in tropical countries is snake. Unlike in this country, in this country, as as far as I understand, there are no snakes. And even if they are, they are not um, dangerous. But uh, the situation in tropical countries are completely different, including Sri Lanka, where I come from. So there are lots of uh, different species, various kinds of snakes, and most of them, or, or if not majority, or some of them, are very dangerous and highly poisonous. So if they bite somebody, it can cause the death of the person. And even today, I think uh, in countries like Sri Lanka, India, and maybe in other uh, tropical countries, uh, considerable amount of deaths are caused by these snake bites. So the situation must have been the same even in the Buddha's time, or if not, it could have been, or it must have been uh, worse or, at, or sometimes it must have been um, uh, less dangerous than today uh, with more forests and things like that. But in the case of these uh, monks, those who were living uh, mainly in forest dwellings, uh, they would have faced uh, more dangers from uh, animals or snakes. So here, uh, when the... Um, incident when the news was passed to the Buddha by a group of monks, uh, Buddha uh, advises them or Buddha tells them, this monk who passed away due to a snake bite would not have died uh, if he had uh, spreaded or if he had spread loving kindness to all kinds of snakes or all um, uh, families of snakes. Now, these four uh, royal snake families, so these four, four royal families of snakes must be the, the way that the snakes were categorized or divided at that time. If not, the species of uh, snakes must have been um, recognized and understood by the ordinary people in this way, that there are these four royal families of snakes and uh, the name, the four names or the four families, so four family names of these snakes are these. Virupakha is one, Erapatha is the second or the another one, and Chabyaputta is the third and the next one, and also the fourth one is Kanha Gotamaka. And these names are used as they are because uh, they can't be translated. They are just given names to these uh, different various kinds of uh, snakes. 
and Buddha says these are royal uh, families or ro four royal snake families. So I don't know why they are called royal, maybe because of their uh, amount or maybe because of their danger or highly uh, maybe venomous, poisonous. Due to those reasons, they, they must have been called uh, as royal families. And even today, actually, another thing, another uh, just a general thing, even today in some countries, especially I know about Sri Lanka only. So in, in Sri Lanka, some uh, there are some snakes which are uh, regarded as some sort of uh, respected ones, especially uh, cobras. In most, in most part of the country, uh, people um, do not kill cobras, even though they do kill other uh, uh, poisonous uh, snakes. Cobras are sort of um, respected as a species of uh, respected um, um, snake. So people are reluctant to uh, kill or harm cobras. Instead, they would sometimes in, in villages, uh, when they see a cobra in the in the garden or in the in the compound of a house or or even sometimes accidentally they might come into houses they would uh, sometimes plead to uh, go away without uh, doing any harm to cobras in a very gentle and respected way so this must have been the same situation at the buddha's time as well why they were called royal snake families so somehow uh, these uh, are the uh, four families mentioned in this sutta uh, by the Buddha. And Buddha says that um, if that monk had spread loving kindness to all these four royal snake families, he wouldn't have died due to this uh, snake bite. So the uh, message, the uh, teaching here is that if you uh, spread loving kindness, if you have loving kindness, metta towards these uh, animals or towards these um, uh, snakes, and in return, you wouldn't get any danger, any uh, harm from them as a result of your uh, loving kindness, as a result of your mind of loving kindness. So that is the message here. And then Buddha goes on to uh, say these uh, stanzas, which contain uh, the wishes and also the ways in which the loving kindness is spread uh, towards these uh, four types of uh, snakes, as well as other uh, insects, which can be harmful to the human beings. So Buddha says, mendicants, because I urge you to spread a mind of love to the four royal snakes families for your own safety, security, and protection. These stanzas are translated in this way. I love the Virupakkas, the Erapathas I love, I love the Chabyaputtas, the Kanha Gotamakas I love. Even though here it is translated as love, it means I uh, radiate my loving kindness, not just love. There's a, uh, big difference between uh, love and loving kindness. We can uh, discuss it further as we continue the discussion. So anyway, this is translated in this sutta as love, I love. That doesn't mean that you love this um, uh, snake and you sort of like to have them as a pet or something. No, this is loving kindness, which is translated, the metta, which is translated as love here in these verses or stanzas. I love the footless creatures, the two-footed I love, I love the four-footed, the many-footed I love. May the footless not harm me, may I not be harmed by the two-footed. May the four-footed not harm me, may I not be harmed by the many-footed. All sentient beings, all living things, all creatures, everyone, May they see only nice things. May bad not come to anyone. So this is wishing the well-being of all creatures, all sentient beings and all living beings. And then there are wishes. The Buddha is immeasurable. The teaching is immeasurable. The Sangha is immeasurable, but, in, uh, but limited are crawling things. And the last uh, stanza contains uh, a list of uh, insects and creatures. So if 
before we read that, uh, before I read that, uh, if anyone is, you know, I, I understand there are some kind of phobias uh, that some people don't like to see and even hear the names of some insects. So if uh, you find anyone here, uh, so you can just uh, omit or you can uh, mute um, your speakers. Uh, snakes and scorpions, centipedes, spiders and lizards and mice. I've made this safeguard, I've made this protection, go away creatures, and so I revere the blessed one. I revere the seven perfectly awakened Buddhas. So this is how uh, the final stanza and the sutta comes to an end. What, what is called the uh, snake king or Khanda Paritta, uh, which has, so which records this um, incident and the Buddha's reply. Uh, to the incident when it is recorded to him, when it is um, the, when the message is uh, passed to him, what he says is that uh, all together you have to spread loving kindness, uh, particularly by mentioning certain certain uh, creatures and by mentioning their families or species, or by mentioning various kinds of uh, creatures, starting with uh, footless, two-footed four-footed or many-footed. So that is how, so when, when we say, when we use these terms, it covers um, all and every creatures or insects which can be harmful to the human beings. And then uh, wishing their well-being and also wishing the uh, protection from them. And uh, another stanza is there, to um, uh, mention the um, qualities of Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. That is also a traditional thing and also a common thing uh, done by the practitioners or followers of the Buddha or the congregation of uh, the Buddha. And then finally, wishing again the well-being and also protection from uh, various types of insects and uh, creatures which can be harmful. So that is what this uh, snake king sutta is, or the, the content of the sutta. And as I said, this is all about metta and loving kindness. So even though this is very simple and also only records just one incident and Buddha's reply and uh, his response to this incident, it tells us a big lesson that, that is the uh, metta and uh, uh, Buddha guarantees here that if you have loving kindness towards these uh, creatures, these animals or these snakes, in return, you will get a protection from them. And uh, Buddha clearly says that if that monk had spread loving kindness to all sort of uh, animals, or all sort of uh, snakes, he wouldn't have died due to a snake bite. So that is how this relationship goes on and continues. So this is the uh, theme and the topic of this um, sutta, the snake king. Um, and the uh, lesson Buddha teaches here is that metta or loving kindness. So before, I, before we go to the uh, um, topic of the Dharma metta, I would like to uh, ask, uh, the, the reading uh, finished, I would like to uh, uh, ask everyone to um, contribute to the uh, discussion before we go on to the uh, next part of our uh, lesson, uh, which is the uh, metta. If anybody would like to- uh, Yes. Can I ask a question, please? Yes. Uh, now, uh, spreading uh, uh, loving kindness is, of course, is a very good thing, uh, but Having in mind for your own protection, isn't it a bit selfish, the motive? Shouldn't it be just for the loving kindness for their well-being rather than uh, the protection will come as a byproduct, I suppose, but to have that in uh, your priority as such, is a, I, I thought it's a bit selfish. 
Yes, I think I understand your point. Uh, well, here, um, uh, yeah, it, it, as you very correctly said, it is uh, the protection that you uh, have or that you get is just only a, a, a byproduct of uh, metta. So metta is uh, not practiced just for the protection only. Metta is practiced for uh, many other reasons. And, uh, but as a result of uh, practice of metta, you will get protection plus many more other things. So we, I, I put together the, um, uh, the benefits which are mentioned again uh, in the suttas, in many, in various suttas as the benefits of uh, this metta or practice of metta. Uh, among those uh, benefits, one is the protection. So you, the advice here is not to practice metta just for your protection only. But if you have practiced metta, as a result, you will have the protection too. Yeah. So because in Karni Metta Sutra, you, you will pray for everybody, long short, all that. So it doesn't have uh, say that it is for your protection, but it is for the sake of their well being, isn't it? That should be the primary motive of uh, metta for the yes. well being of others. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, well being uh, of others. And eventually, you will get protected. Eventually. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Eventually, or as a result of this uh, relationship, you will get the protection too, plus many more other things. Actually, in, in total, specifically, there are these 11 benefits uh, given as the advantages or benefits of metta. So one who practices metta will um, have these 11 benefits as a result. In Metani so, Sansa Sutra, isn't it? In Metani Sansa, in Metani Sansa or the benefits of metta. Yes. Yes, Bhante. Bhante, if my knowledge that is, it works with the both ways. Because when you are my meditation and your kindness, and you improve yourself inside as well. And this works for the others as well. It works for the both ways. Not only you are thinking just for, for the sake of uh, your save, uh, save from the animal and you know, snakes, but when you are improving yourself, it goes for your heart and you improve your may, kindness, metta, bhavana, and everything towards everybody, not only specifically for the, only the, for the snakes. That's what I feel like, you know, when you think about uh, that way, it works towards both way, and it's improve your more, more, more metta towards everybody. Yes, when we practice metta, it, yeah, it works uh, in um, both directions. So for yourself and uh, as well as others, because you send your love and kindness towards others. So it works and it has uh, benefits um, for both days. You do not have any um, ill will or evil thoughts or anger, hatred, jealousy towards others. And as a result, so you will also um, enjoy the same things. So you won't, uh, most probably you won't have uh, uh, jealousy of others or hatred of, of others or ill will of others. Now, this is, this is uh, pretty much evident from the Buddha's own life. Now, we know uh, in, when we read or when we learn the story of the Buddha, the life story of the Buddha, we learn lots of stories where Buddha brought under control some untamed people as well as animals. There are some famous stories where Buddha um, uh, brought under control uh, untamed animals. Uh, some famous ones are this uh, Nalagiri's story, and there's a story of a snake as well, and some other stories. So all these things were done by the Buddha, not by any, any, any other power than the uh, loving kindness, because he had no anger, no hatred, no evil and him being the fully enlightened Buddha, his loving kindness is the most superior, the superb one comparing with anybody else. So for a person like that, um, there won't be any reaction from however or how much is the uh, dangerous or angry is this creature or, or animal or whatever it is, there won't be any um, bad reactions to a uh, such a person or such a uh, 
person who has uh, developed or who has no um, at least you know um, any just single thought of uh, hatred or nothing so that is the power of the mind which is developed in loving kindness so the power of the mind which has no uh, any negative or any hatred or any evil thought in the mind completely eradicated and is instead um, the full amount of the complete loving kindness even though the uh, other party other person or a, or animal or creature or insect whatever it is is coming to harm you still have love and kindness loving kindness towards that person so that can um, stop that reaction so that is how i think uh, buddha uh, uh, brought under control those untamed animals and other creatures including human beings because uh, uh, there won't be any um, conflict or any struggle or any any quarrel because uh, uh, buddha's mind is negative in terms of uh, hatred so other parties hatred is um ceased or come to uh, be ceased because of that loving kindness bante um during your metta bhavana is it uh, i mean okay we we normally um uh, in the in the bhavana we uh, bless all the living beings uh, humans animals uh, your relations and whoever who is living and um but what about uh, is it okay to extend your metta bhavana to uh, your departed uh, parents and uh, brothers and sisters and other relations is there any uh, uh, in as much as you 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 practice in loving kindness towards the living beings what about the ones who are already passed away is it okay uh well normally um uh, uh in the instructions uh, for metta bhavana you are instructed and advised not to practice meditation uh, loving kindness towards the dead people so it has all always to be somebody who is living so that is said because uh, when you uh, send your or radiate your loving kindness towards someone who is uh, active or someone who is living then only your loving kindness will be active so that is the instruction given so you do not think of uh, uh, the dead people the uh, deceased people when you practice loving kindness you always think of and think about someone who is living what is so, the reason uh, for that bante because I'm, i can't see i mean uh, in as much as you love the people who are living the 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 your departed relations parents i mean they were loving you in as much as you are loving them when they were living so when they have passed away you just forget about them i mean you are just passing merits of other kusala kamma what you perform in this life but metta bhavana is unlimited uh, uh, you know there is no Uh, it is why why should it be restricted to living beings only i mean i can't see the logic of it yeah yeah that is that is correct but, but the thing is uh, for your metta to be active it has to be uh, sent to someone who is living now when well the other thing is that we don't i, I think we shouldn't be uh, worried about uh, the uh, dead people or that our our metta is not going towards them because when you read uh, the metta sutta it covers everybody the one uh, who is living far or near dwelling here or somewhere else humans or non humans or born and to be born so we don't know that uh, our uh, relative or who ever who has uh, passed away uh, in amongst or in uh, in 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 one of those categories so we don't know but specifically you shouldn't be thinking about a person who has passed away by his name or by her name because that person is no longer living but when you spread your loving kindness 
thinking in that way, thinking that this should or this may go to um, everyone, humans, non-humans living here or somewhere else, big, small, living far away and born and to be born. It, it might cover everyone, uh, including uh, the uh, uh, death or dead people as well, who might be in one of those categories now. So uh, the logic given here, why you shouldn't uh, think of the dead people is that when you think of uh, dead people, there won't be any reaction. And also uh, your metta, your loving kindness will not be an active one. If you try to send it towards somebody who is not active. Okay, Bhante, thank you very much. Yes, Lux. Yeah, um, I had a different question, but uh, maybe if you think of people in the past and your departed ones, you might you might go towards grief, which I which I I think is something that isn't encouraged in by the Buddha, right? Uh, there's no there's really no point. Um, Bringing your own, bringing yourself more dukkha. Thinking about, um, you know, the attachment that you have to people who have, who, you, who there's no chance of you ever seeing again. Really, I guess. Yeah, that is that is one aspect too, and also, uh, as you have mentioned, the, the grief, and not only grief actually. So there, well, there are these. Uh, certain uh, defilements which are called uh, vanchaka dhamma uh, which are being recognized as deceiving uh, mental concomitants or deceiving um, unwholesome thoughts and in the guise of metta there can be not only uh, grief there can be um, attachment there can be uh, uh, jealousy there can be greed uh, arising in the guise of your metta so in, in every case, you have to be very careful, not let uh, those uh, deceiving thoughts come into your mind in the guise of metta. So uh, yeah. it is like, you know, um, uh, pretending to be metta, you might have an attachment towards somebody. So, and mm -hmm. pretending to be metta, it, it could be sometimes uh, anger as well. So uh, in instructions uh, to metta bhavana, to metta meditation, meditation on loving kindness, uh, it is very clearly mentioned that uh, you have to follow a um, certain uh, way or order when you practice loving kindness. And um, first of all, you try uh, sending your loving kindness towards yourself as well as uh, those who are familiar to you, those who are near and dear to you, uh, and then when you are developed or when uh, your mind is developed to a certain um, level, only you should go to the next level. And when you have practiced and experienced enough, you should go to the next level. So you have to be very careful, not only grief, there can be other unwholesome mental concomitants or mental thoughts, unwholesome defilements can, can come in the guise of metta. Okay. I, I did have one other question. Um, this word, the sentience of it, is there some kind of definition that the Buddha gave what is a sentient being? Uh, does it stop at insects? Does it? Uh, I, I guess in those days they wouldn't have had microscopes, so they don't know about the germs. You know, amoebas, germs, plants. Where does the sentience stop? Uh, well, I... I'm not sure exactly, but uh, according to some teachings, this um, now this this thing, uh, yeah. So um, according to some teachings, um, uh, these sentient beings. Uh, by sentient beings, it means uh, the living creatures, living beings, and uh, according to some teachings, uh, what we call. Um, Ekajivi, those who have, I don't know how to explain it. Um, the plants and other creatures are not uh, taken as the um, conscious or conscious living beings. 
one day. Can you hear me? Yes. You can, yes? Can yes, I, yes, yeah, please. Can I, can I share my experience yeah. of treating snake bite cases, then ask you a question one day? Yeah. Well, I saw many cases of snake bite when I was working in Nepal, and I like to share one particular incident. One night, a mother and a small baby were brought to hospital. We were able to save the mother, but not the baby. And they were sleeping. So they accidentally hit the snake and the snake bit the baby first, then the mother. The baby died. So from this sutta, if you saw Buddha has all compassion for everyone. So my question is, how, how come this baby, who is only a few months old, I'm sure he, he doesn't know what love is, why he it is, but the baby died and murder we were able to save. So that seems to be a contradiction. So if this baby has no hatred, no anger, no ill will against anyone, the baby should have been saved, not the mother. So just like Buddha, this baby didn't have, he, he, he was a little baby only. So that seems to be a contradiction to this, this sutta. I was just thinking maybe one day. Is there any explanation? Uh, well, I don't know anywhere uh, uh, it is explained in the teachings, but uh, if we, uh, based on this, this particular sutta, this says <clears throat> that, uh, so if you, uh, spread uh, loving kindness uh, towards mm. these creatures they won't in in return harm you so this this incident what you have just mentioned is um, well does it have anything um, uh, to do with uh, loving kindness so i don't know because uh, it 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 can be something um, exceptional or can be excluded from this scenario because this is uh, uh, buddha advising some you know mm -hmm. uh, uh, grown up people uh, consciously you have to be uh, uh, kind or you have to have loving kindness towards these and then they will um, not uh, do any harm to you but the incident that you have just related this, I don't know whether it, it goes uh, in this uh, category. Yeah, I know about that. I've, I've heard similar stories from the um, Buddhist monks and nuns from Amravati that they spend years and years sleeping open in the open just with the net and the, they can see the snakes passing through, passing by, but the snakes do not bother them. Yeah. From my experience of working in Nepal, yeah. in the Torai, where the snakes, you can, even snakes will come to your house inside until you disturb them or accidentally step on them, they don't bite you. Yeah. If you just let them be, they just go on their way and you go on your way. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's what I was just thinking when I was going through this. Yeah. Thank you. That, anyway. that, yes, that can happen. And also uh, the other thing is, so you, as, as you have mentioned that uh, your experience about snakes. So we, we, we also know the same thing because as I said, uh, I come from Sri Lanka, we are lots of snakes and we are very cautious and uh, careful with them. And we know how to behave and what to do when we see or things like that. So the other thing is if you touch or if you step on a snake or if you try to scare them, <laughs> That doesn't matter how much metta you have. Sometimes they can come and uh, bite you for their security or their their protection. So most yeah, this snakes the... bite you for their security. So they yeah, don't the... they don't they don't want to harm you. Or they don't want to kill you or, or eat you. They uh, come back and uh, bite you for their security. That that is their action of um, protection. So if you step yeah, they, or if you just... try to scare or mm -hmm. if you try to hit them. That's reflect. only when they bite. So that yeah. doesn't matter how much you have practiced thing. previously. Like in this, yeah. this case as well, it is mm. the one I was saying, the mother accidentally hit the snake yeah, 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 and the yeah. snake bit the, yeah. the baby. Yeah. 
Thank you, Anuva Pante. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a few Bante. people. Yes, yeah, that was the first. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, going back to the sutta, yeah. one thing I think in the sutta, what it really means is when you see a poisonous snake, yeah. the immediate um, reaction is you create hatred yeah. or, or, or the first um, uh, the, the action is hatred and with aversion. Yeah. Yes. So the, the consciousness will be immediate consciousness will be hatred with hatred and with aversion. Yeah. Patiga. Because yeah, yeah. you want to get rid of and chase him away, uh, hit with a, a pole or something like that. Or even in Sri Lanka, you throw a kerosene oil. Yeah. You know, so the, the, the meaning of this is actually having uh, metta is right opposite to the hatred. That's exactly what you are trying uh, in the sutta trying to say. So instead of getting that uh, uh, consciousness, that feeling, and you have to develop some sort of uh, metta toward the animal and control yourself, right? And I think uh, the, the answer is, uh, it's very clear actually what Buddha was trying to say that, that means whenever you meet a uh, uh, poisonous snake or some, something like that, don't get upset, don't get hatred, don't get a uh, feeling of aversion and just ignore and let it go and that's it. And that's exactly in Sri Lanka. There are so many uh, poisonous snakes, but how many snake bites there? You know, very, very small amount because accidentally you step on a snake, then there's a possibility of, but yeah. snakes always, they avoid the footpath. Yeah. yeah, they always avoid the footpath. When they hear the, uh, when they get the vibration of uh, somebody coming towards snake, Snakes will uh, move away. Yeah. So, yeah. Same way, we have to do the same thing. Yes. Yeah, it's a very good point, actually. So, yeah, if yeah. you see a snake, yeah, yeah you will yeah. have anger towards them because you know this creature is dangerous yeah. and you sort of, you know, feel yeah. like killing this. So, and, yeah. inst and also, you, yeah. you, you, you most probably will have fear as well. Yeah. So fear is That's also it. not a good uh, yeah. mental thought to yeah. have. So instead of having those negative things, if you can have sort of metta, yeah, yeah. that's the best thing. Yes, it's a yeah. good point. Yeah, that is what is uh, yeah. taught in the sutta. sutta yeah, yeah. Thank you for yeah. pointing it out. Yeah. And yeah. we've got two more people. And um, can I next go to Gasha? And if you don't mind, can you uh, pronounce your first name, please? Yes, it's Francois. Francois, Fran okay. Like yeah. France. Yeah. And a bit of soir. Yeah, thank you, Francois. Pleasure. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to know was, does yeah. karma follow rebirth? And if so, would that mean that the little baby maybe had done something in its past life? Yeah, it's it's an interesting question. So it well, well, nobody, none of us can be certain whether this is this was caused by karma. So it could be karma as well as it could be something else. So sometimes your death or your whatever harm that happened to you can be caused by karma, but we can't be certain. There's a possibility. Possibility is one fifth. There are four more things that can cause things like that. So karma is among those five things. So karma's possibility is one fifth. So it could be either karma as well as other things. We, we, nobody can be certain and say that oh, this, this baby died due to uh, bad karma. You can't say that. That is not right. It could be karma as well as there could be other reasons to that. Thank you. And Tonya, do you want to say something? Uh, yes. Yeah. So um, earlier yeah. you uh, mentioned something about uh, defilement and in relation to meta and the grief conversation and said there could be many uh, defilements and I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more about other defilements that it can occur when practicing metta and what leads to that 
Yeah, mo mo yes, yes, good, thank you. So most likely uh, the uh, deceiving uh, mental concomitants or defilements which can come in the guise of uh, metta is uh, attachment because when you try to uh, practice or send or radiate your metta towards your loved ones, instead of having neutral or loving kindness, you will, you can have, uh, you may have attachment towards them so that is the uh, most likely uh, concomitant or mental thought that can come or that can arise in the guise of metta. So you should uh, actually and truly have metta, not the attachment. So attachment is one. And the other thing is um, grief, as uh, Lux mentioned. So you can have grief. And also it can um, um, uh, be sometimes... Um, jealousy or hatred and mostly uh, uh, thoughts like uh, attachment and which are connected with attachment such as uh, greed uh, and uh, yeah greed or attachment uh, clinging those things can come in the guise of metta but you have to be careful uh, to uh, develop metta not develop attachment or, or greed Okay, so uh, if do we have any more questions or any any comments? Yes. Bante, can I contribute? Yes, please. Uh, it, uh, if you pass merits to depart, uh, metta to show metta to departed relatives, yeah. uh, it will not help the letting go process. Uh, yeah. uh, and it also can, as you said, it can bring other emotions to the surface. Yeah. So letting go, it, it will not be helpful in the letting go process. We are supposed yeah. to let go yeah. as Buddhists. Yes. Yeah, let go. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point and also a valid point. And also uh, someone said, Gam said that uh, um, there's no interaction when you try to sort of uh, send metta towards dead people. So uh, because of that reason also, uh, it is not advised. Uh, to practice metta towards dead people. You can have compassion or you can uh, share karma and good thoughts and merits or whatever with dead people, but uh, this uh, metta is something uh, alive or uh, active thing. So therefore, they are excluded. Okay, so at this point, let's go to um, the uh, other part of our discussion, which is the... Um, uh, but uh, can I ask something? Yeah, please? yeah, please, please go so ahead. On, on this sutta before you start, Bhante, that last word, they say, I revered the seven perfectly awakened Buddhas. So now yeah. we, in our parita, now this one is the Kanda parita, but we also have like the Atavisha parita, which is the 28 Buddhas. Yeah. And then when we take the Chula Jinnah Jin Pandra, there were 10 Buddhas and with Gautam Buddha. So when they say the seven perfectly awakened Buddhas, are, is there any other? Uh, which, which I'm not aware of any other parita which sort of takes seven of them. Why does he? Why does he say revere the seven perfectly Buddhas? Well, uh, well, actually, I'm not sure why uh, seven Buddhas are taken. Uh, maybe this uh, number seven is somewhat uh, sig significant in, in, in Buddhist teachings, maybe due to that reason, uh, these seven previous Buddhas are mentioned, maybe that, I'm not sure why only seven are mentioned while there could be some more other Buddhas. And, and also we don't know which the seven, I mean, there is a, yeah. like the seven yeah. Bojanga, there are lots of things. Which yeah, are, lots of which is, yeah, things which like are Like in seven, the numerical yeah. discourses where yeah. the particular thing, but yeah. we, there are no uh, suttas which has pulled out seven, unlike like Chula Jinda Panjari has 10 named uh, Buddha, but there is not. The other thing is, though this translation of uh, of Bhante Sujata sort of accents about I love Virupa because if you look at the the you know the Piedasi Handaro's book of protection which is yeah. quite a simple book of yeah. thing yeah. the way it's told there it's pretty obvious like what Dhammasari says that the the overriding 
principle is that you are metta sahagata. So your yeah. mind is full of metta yeah. as opposed to particular sahagata, which is yeah. Yeah. And when he translates also, he says, may I have metta for this? So it's yeah. like, may I be full of loving kindness? Yeah. So yeah. overriding the whole thing is about that feeling of metta, which yeah. will draw to you more and form the protective shield because it's a very highly elevated motion as opposed to anxiety and fear and this relinquishing and patigaha and that kind of you know, thing. So yeah. that depending on the translation, it, uh, uh, it, it becomes very clear that that is that feeling that protects you, Bhante. Yes, Thank you. yeah, yeah, correct. Thank you. And also going back to this point of uh, sentient beings, uh, Chamare Leela Sen has sent the uh, message saying sentient being is defined as any living being who is able to experience feelings responsive to or conscious of sense in impressions. So that is the um, um, interpretation or definition for sentient beings. And uh, as I mentioned the, uh, in the Buddhist teachings, normally these living beings are uh, taken as sentient beings. So other uh, uh, beings which we uh, recognize as bacteria, so things like that are not normally uh, mentioned. Okay, let's go to the next half of our discussion today. And in this part, I would like to uh, talk more about metta as a meditation and also as a practice that we can uh, apply in our day-to-day -day life and its benefits and how we can practice this and whether uh, this works truly or can anybody uh, have and experience the uh, benefits of it and things like that. And also particularly metta as a meditation, bhavana. So as I said, metta has been mentioned uh, in uh, numerous discourses by the Buddha in numerous occasions for numerous reasons. And um, metta, as we all know, is one of these 40 objects of uh, meditation for samatha, concentration meditation. One of those 40 is metta for concentration meditation. So it is very um, highly uh, recommended and also very well known common practice of uh, meditation. And when someone practices as metta as a meditation uh, for, you know, regularly, or if someone uh, develops uh, a mind of metta in the uh, practice of uh, meditation, According to, again, the suttas, discourses, Buddha has mentioned, uh, there are, I think, um, a few suttas where uh, benefits of metta is mentioned. Uh, the very well known is this uh, metta nisansa sutta, the benefits of metta, where these 11 um, uh, benefits are mentioned as the results or as the benefits of metta, uh, which are these. The first one is, the one who uh, practices or one who has developed or one who develops metta or mind of metta will experience or enjoy these benefits. The first one is sleep well. The person who has metta, the person who practices metta or develops the mind of metta or uh, full, uh, mindfulness of metta will have or enjoy uh, good sleep, can sleep well. Now, this is... Uh, we can further discuss about these individual um, uh, things uh, in the discussion. The second one is uh, he can wake up happily. So sleeping well and waking up happily, the one who practices metta would enjoy this. And uh, the other, th other, other one, the third one is that um, don't have bad dreams. So sleep first, sleeping well, and then wake up very happily with you know, uh, energy or energetic mind and body. And then in between sleeping and waking up, you won't have any bad dreams. And also uh, we'll have humans love. So human beings, human beings will love you. Or they will have always love and good um, sort of uh, reactions or response uh, and friendliness from human beings. And also, uh, from non-human beings. So for this non-human category, you can put anybody, animals, insects, snakes, or any other um, uh, beings uh, who are non-humans, be 
it you know as we uh, sometimes talk about this uh, um, spirit or whatever non human beings so because people sometimes are afraid of these non human beings as well those who are seen or unseen so uh, as a result of or as a benefit of metta you can enjoy uh, the love of non human beings as well that is the fifth and the sixth one is deities protect so that is also mentioned devata rakanti right uh, because uh, according to the teachings again there are um, various kinds of deities or so divine beings heavenly beings so it says that devata rakanti deities will protect you the one who practices so it can be again non human beings so whether you believe uh, deities or not and the number 7 the seventh one is that can't be harmed by fire poison or blade nasa aggiva visangva sattangva khamati so you will have protection from fire poison or blade so it is um, um, highly likely that you can be protected uh, by uh, these things so these are harmful things so these can be harmful for somebody so one who has developed metta will be protected by these things as a result of your mindful of uh, metta and number 8 is mind quickly enters immersion that is tuatang chittang samadhyati you can uh, enjoy or you your mind will very quickly enter into concentration immersion that means concentration samadhi or one pointedness because your mind is uh, free from many defilements when your mind is developed in metta uh, simultaneously your mind is freed from number of different uh, various uh, defilements so as a result of that your mind can very quickly enter into the samadhi uh, one pointedness so uh, concentration and number 7 face is clear and bright you mukhavanno vipasi that you will have beautiful fragrant or bright clear face so no need any cosmetics or nothing as a result of your metta you can have beautiful face and uh, number 10 don't feel lost when you die so that is another uh, benefit that means uh, at the time of your death uh, you will have your mind which is very uh, not lost or not not confused or not uh, fearful not uh, dread nothing your mind asamullo kalam karoti so if i am asked what is the best state of mind that one has to or can be at the time of death this is it asamullo uh, kalam karoti if you can have mind which is uh, not lost or which is not defiled by anything which is you know mindful or calm and quiet or serene so that result or that benefit you can gain uh, through the practice of uh, metta love and kindness and after death it says finally if you are not um, if you haven't attained any um, state or any um, sort of uh, enlightenment or stage of enlightenment Uh, your next birth or your rebirth or your next uh, uh, rebecoming will be uh, an higher one a higher one uh, such as brahma realm so those are the uh, benefits the 11 benefits given as the benefits of metta uh, metta being practiced as the uh, meditation and the one who has developed metta for long period and forget about the long period it is mentioned in some other suttas that even if somebody practices metta just for a very brief a few moments that can also bring you good results but if one practices it uh, for long period and develops the mind uh, of metta or uh, mindfulness of metta and um, as a result you will enjoy these uh, 11 benefits or some of them or all of them so those are also mentioned uh, in the sutta when metta uh, is practiced as a meditation so uh, specifically when metta meditation or metta bhavana is practiced uh, as a meditation because as i mentioned it is one of these uh, 40 objects of uh, samatha meditation so metta bhavana is uh, uh, a part or kind of samatha meditation and um, in terms of meditation 
uh, one can practice metta to until one develop uh, jhanas so it can uh, one can go up to uh, third jhana by uh, meditation of metta and when meditation is uh, practiced as it is mentioned in the metta sutta the discourse on loving kindness you radiate your loving kindness towards all living beings as well as towards all directions so when you go spe- specifically particularly to these things uh, such as the beings and the directions you uh, in your practice of metta you start with yourself and then you go to your loved ones then you go to um, uh, other beings friendly unfriendly neutral and human non human and then finally towards all beings and also in terms of directions you start with all four directions and then um, up and above and also up and below and also all 10 directions so in various ways you can practice uh, metta meditation when it is uh, practiced as uh, meditation and there are these six ways again mentioned in number of suttas as ways of uh, Uh, metta or metta uh, being practiced in these six ways or if not uh, apart from metta being practiced uh, meditation in your day to day life uh, in order to maintain uh, a mind of or mind full of metta full of uh, loving kindness you can uh, be like this so you can practice it in these six ways that is to maintain bodily acts of loving kindness towards anybody towards others those who are uh, mentioned above as all beings in both openly and privately so your bodily acts of loving kindness the way you show your bodily uh, acts or uh, physical activities so physical acts of loving kindness it has to be openly and privately both openly and privately because mostly people don't do uh, bad things openly but they they might do it privately so when you truly practice uh, or maintain your mind full of metta loving kindness you have to do it in both openly and privately and also maintain verbal acts of loving kindness verbally when you speak you have to show and practice your loving kindness again in these both ways towards all uh, living beings living creatures openly as well as privately and also in your mind so in your mind also you can have very violent thoughts and feelings towards others and instead of having them if you practice uh, metta loving kindness mentally again it has to be uh, both openly and privately so mental things are anyway not open but uh, it has to be again you have to make sure that you have uh, mental thoughts of loving kindness so your mental acts of loving kindness both openly as well as privately for yourself as well as uh, when you reveal your thoughts to others so in these six ways you should practice loving kindness and this is uh, according to the uh, teachings uh, according to the sutta this is the way that metta being practiced in your day to day life and also this is very important in terms of relationships now if you think of these six ways if you can um, practice have mindfulness of metta in these six ways it can you know ensure and make sure that your relationships are very well maintained and you have no conflicts troubles uh, difficulties because you have no anger no ill will no hatred no jealousy towards other party be it your be it the relationship between parents and children husband and wife friends and friends so whatever it is so this is very practical way of uh, practicing metta and loving kindness in a practical way and it can also be practiced as a meditation as well so as we mentioned so those are the things uh, about metta uh, when it comes to metta meditation and the benefits of metta also those are the ones uh, which are mentioned in uh, the sutras and uh, before i again go to the discussion uh, let me uh, tell you another thing that i have uh, listened to uh, this is regarding metta and as well as um, uh, which has some connection to us 
So I've uh, one day, some time ago, long time ago, when I was uh, searching something on the internet, I accidentally and I suddenly found this uh, voice recording of uh, Venerable Balangoda Ananda Maitri. I think most of you know him. He is one of the most senior and very well respected uh, Venerable Monk from Sri Lanka who uh, came to uh, UK and uh, did lots of services and things. He has written lots of books as well about Buddhism. And uh, actually that, that recording was uh, recorded and it was a talk he had given in London Buddhist Vihara, most probably not in this place, maybe in one of those uh, uh, old places where uh, Vihara was. So in that recording, he was uh, uh, relating an incident of Anagarika Dharmapala, the founder of the London Buddhist Vihara, because they have they had met uh, each other, they had a um, good connection and relationship uh, in between them. So he was relating one of the um, stories that Anagarika Dharmapala told to him. This is about Metta or his, his Dharmapala's practice of Metta and how, how he got the benefit uh, in his life, practical uh, advantage of Metta. Now, uh, according to this story, Venerable Balangodananda Maitri Thera was saying that once uh, Dharmapala, Anagarika Dharmapala told him uh, how he got the benefit of Metta. Now, this happened when Dharmapala, Anagarika Dharmapala was in India. So he had lots of, even though uh, he was uh, respected as a national hero in Sri Lanka now, during his lifetime, he had lots of difficulties from different people. Because even though he was doing lots of services and doing good things, you know, the situation in anywhere, there can be um, enemies as well. So uh, he um, uh, worked for the revival of Buddhism in Sri Lanka. And also he went to India and he uh, uh, started this campaign to uh, save Buddha Gaya and all these things. So you know uh, about his services. So this happened uh, according to the story that he had told to Venerable Anand Maitreya. Uh, when he was in India, uh, yeah, when he was in, uh, yeah, when he was in India, um, uh, somebody had, uh, complained to the police against him for some reason and he was now um, uh, police has put uh, a notice that this person is a wanted man uh, and police was uh, searching for him to take him into uh, custody to arrest him so uh, according to the story as i remember it uh, what uh, anagarika dharmapala had done he had asked one of his friends to find a photograph of the commission of the police who is in charge of uh, um, uh, arresting him, the, uh, the chief of the police. And uh, this friend had uh, found a photograph and also his details, the name and place where he is now and all these things. And then what Anagarika Dharmapala had done, he had put this photograph in the place where he practiced his daily meditations and he has now his name and all details. And he had particularly included this person, this commissioner, uh, in his metta meditation. And uh, in uh, generally, he was practicing metta meditation. And particularly, he was sending his loving, uh, loving kindness towards this person who is now coming to arrest him for some uh, uh, reason, which is not, you know, right or which which he has not done because of these enemies. They have complained um, with some fabricated things to uh, arrest him. So he has included this commissioner in his uh, daily uh, metta meditation uh, and particularly sending his uh, loving kindness towards this person. And finally, what had happened when he came or somehow uh, this commissioner has decided to um, stop the uh, search for this uh, Anagarika Dharmapala uh, for some reason that uh, he, he must have understood that the uh, complaints uh, are not right or fake or whatever reason uh, Anagarika Dharmapala had told Venerable Palangod Ananda Maitri Thera after a few days of his practice, this commissioner, the police has 
stopped. They had stopped uh, search for Anagarika Dharampal and he was free to travel in between the two countries. So Anagarika Dharampal had told Venerable Ananda Maitri Thera, this is how he experienced the, um, um, uh, the result or the practical results of his uh, practice of uh, uh, metta meditation. So like that, maybe you have your own experience and I too have my own experience because I've done the same thing in my life as well, because you know, we are ordinary beings. Sometimes there are people who are not friendly with us for some reasons. So if you sort of uh, have the same feeling like anger or hatred or unfriendliness, that can cause the uh, situation worse. But if you can have uh, metta instead of anger, even though the other party is not friendly, other party is uh, angry with you, or other party is doing something bad, telling something bad, and behaving badly towards you, if you can have true loving kindness. So now in, in on this occasion, you have to be very careful not to let other uh, defilements to come into your mind in the guise of loving kindness, because in the guise of loving kindness, there can be other deceiving thoughts come into your mind even hatred. But if you can truly practice loving kindness, it works. So those anger, those uh, angry, jealousy, those things uh, will be seized as a result. So like that, there are uh, many results of it and uh, those 11 benefits are actually, according to my understanding, are true and uh, correct because you can enjoy good sleep, you can uh, wake very happily and with energy, because those, those two things, as far as I understand, can be problematic, because I know some people, those who can't sleep well, and those who have to take medicines for that, because uh, having a good sleep is a, is a blessing. So if your mind is uh, full of metta, you can very uh, peacefully, sleep and enjoy your sleep. And also you can wake up uh, very happily and with energy. And in between your sleeps, you don't have uh, bad dreams because that is also another problem for some people. Some people can't um, uh, sleep. So some, even some, sometimes people come and tell us that Bhante uh, so-and-so cannot sleep and they wake up um, uh, with fear. They sometimes scream at night uh, having seen uh, um, uh, nightmares or bad dreams. So those things are very practical. And um, I think uh, uh, those results are true and uh, anybody would experience them if you practice uh, metta, loving kindness. Okay, so. And Bhante, can I share another metta story that when we yeah. went to London, Buddhist Vihara, that Sumana Ratnayaka, who yeah. was in Sweden, he used to always tell the story how he was, when he was living in Sweden, uh, his house that he was renting out or staying in, uh, ants during some particular time in summer, ants visited the pantry and there were lots of ants. So the landlord had come and told him he has to get rid of the ants, otherwise that it's not uh, hygienic and that he can't remain there. So he... Uh, but he didn't want to kill them because he was a monk at the time. So he uh, was wondering what to do, but whatever he did and however much he cleaned and kept away the, uh, the you know, the food away from the, the ant uh, continued to come. So he was given a deadline and he was told that if he, if he can't clean, uh, you know, clean the pantry or, of ants that he would have to leave the house. So he then sat and he said for two or three days, I, continuously he did metta meditation and in the night also he he said and he said on the day that they came suddenly there was not a single ant and the ants never ever visited and he always shares this story when he comes to London Buddhist Vihara with us to say that is his own personal experience of the power of metta. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Man. Yeah thank you yes yeah like that like the story that I mentioned I've uh, heard there are a number of stories where uh, metta is practical and uh, people have experienced very uh, practical uh, benefits of it. Okay, so we can have... 
Yes. Can I ask a question, please? Yes. Uh, you know, you mentioned something uh, in the list of uh, my three uh, at the six at the start of the meditation. Yes. Yes. Uh, don't feel lost when you die. Can you explain yes. a little more about that? I just don't understand that. Don't feel lost when you die. Yeah, that means your mind will be uh, serene and your mind will be uh, sort of uh, calm and uh, you you wouldn't have any thoughts such as fear and uh, uh, things like that because the moment of death can be, you know, for some people or for many people, a uh, very sort of uh, hard and difficult uh, moment to face. But the one who has uh, practiced uh, metta will yeah. face it very peacefully. So that is the best uh, thought moment one would uh, one can have at the time of one's death. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yes. Okay. So, any Thank any you. more you, comments or contributions, uh, questions? Bhante, what is the Pali Pali phrase for that? Asam mullo. Asam mulho kalam karoti. Kalam karoti is dying. Asam mulho means your mind is not deluded. Uh -huh. Kalam karoti. Kalam karoti. So asam mullo is delusion. Asam mulho is undiluted. Undiluted and kalam karoti means? Dice, dice. A dice, ah, right. okay. Bhante? Yes, Lux. Yeah, on your last slide, yeah. you talk about bodily acts of loving kindness and uh, verbal acts of love, loving kindness. I kind of um, always understood metta to be a, a purely mental thing. Isn't the bodily acts and the verbal acts uh, actually karuna? What is it? Yeah, the, yes, yes. Now, it, it, it could be both karuna and metta. The uh, difference between karuna and metta, karuna, you uh, show and you radiate towards somebody who is in need of something. For example, if uh, someone is sick, right, you wish his well-being or her well-being, right? I see, and right. And for, right. for metta, you don't have uh, somebody who is sick to send your love or your compassion. Even if that person is uh, better than you, you can still send your metta. But for karuna, you always send somebody who is, or you, if it is physical, you help somebody who is in need of your help. But for metta, without uh, that person needing your help, you can still help by using your body, the bodily act. Okay, thank you. Uh, two things as well. Yes, right. Uh, topics that we talked about earlier. One of the things was um, sharing metta with uh, with the dead, um, and I'm thinking that uh, when we do metta practice, and I think someone also mentioned this, um, we extend our loving kindness towards all beings, and the person who is dead, unless they have passed on in onto nibbana they are no longer the same person they they are not the same person but they are not completely a different person so maybe it also um, doesn't really make sense to direct metta at someone who doesn't exist in the same way that they did before so that that was that was what i was thinking uh why sharing metta with the is, is maybe not recommended. And the other thing was um, Lux um, asked about the difference between things. And one of the things that made me really un in a really tangible way is just biology. So, so of sensory input and uh, processing information I'm sorry, I think Rekha, to make you have decisions is, uh, and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, is it cutting yeah, out? Yeah, you're, yeah, your connection you're dropping is dropping. Out the, the, the second bit, uh, second part of your answer uh, was not heard properly. If you can repeat that again, please.
We can't hear you at um, all now. I don't know. My... Um, uh, just a second then. That's better, we can try again. Better now? Yeah. So uh, I don't know if, if you could hear my first point. Yes. The first point, Metaphor, I think we heard it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my second point was about uh, the distinction between sentient and non-sentient beings. And I was saying that the most tangible way that I was able to understand it is that sentient beings have a nervous system. And ner a nervous system makes a being capable of sensory input, receiving sensory input. So they can sense things, they can feel things and they are able to process information. So they have consciousness and uh, they are able of moving. So they have a mo motor output, which makes them able to, let's say, move out of uh, danger or make a decision to move a certain way. Um, so that was just something that made it much more uh, easier to understand for me what the distinction, where the distinction lies between living or sentient creatures and non-sentient creatures. Okay, thank you very much, Reka, for your uh, contribution. And also some, uh, Padma has uh, asked, what is the significance of uh, up to third jhana? Is it to do with the <clears throat> jhanic factors? So according to the uh, meditation instructions given, regarding uh, metta meditation, it is shown and it is uh, uh, recommended as the uh, type of practice by which you can, uh, in terms of uh, uh, achievements, you can achieve uh, till the third jhana by the practice of uh, metta meditation. So that is what is said in the instructions. I don't know if uh, Dr. Sumana Pereira is today here with us. Maybe she can clarify this as she's uh, I don't know if she's here today, but maybe anybody can uh, contribute. Uh, so, but anyway, the um, instructions uh, given about meditation of metta says that um, one, uh, when one practices metta meditation, the highest level, highest achievement would be the third jhana. Is that correct? Can somebody uh, uh, comment yeah. on that if you are aware of it? Yes. Yeah, Bante. Siddharam yes. According to um, uh, the, uh, what is that? Um, Visuddhi Magga. Visuddhi Magga. Yeah, that is where uh, I yeah. learned yeah. it Vi from. Yeah, Visuddhi Magga, uh, this comes, uh, Metta comes under illimitables. Yeah, illimitables. Yeah. And uh, uh, Metta can go up to third jhana according mm -hmm. to Sutra. Sutra and fourth jhana according to Abhidham. You know, because there's a difference between uh, Abhidham yeah, yeah, jhana yeah. and uh, Sutra exactly. jhana. Yes, so yeah. in the list, it's very clearly given actually in uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 in that book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, according to the Visuddhi Magga, yeah. it says uh, by practice of metta, one can achieve the maximum, the highest of third jhana. Third jhana, yeah. Because this is one of the uh, 40 objects, as I mentioned, metta, yeah. and also it is in the category of these <clears throat> four divine abodes, so Satara Brahma Vihara, yeah. metta, the other three being Karuna, uh, compassion, mudita, sympathetic joy, and uh, upekka, equanimity. So metta yeah. is the first one. Yeah. And also, uh, before we end, I would like to uh, mention this also. And at the end of the Metta Sutta, when you read, it says um, one can uh, achieve Nibbana. If you can remember, let me uh, quote that part only before we uh, finish the class today, because uh, uh, this is also worth discussing. And uh, it says, not embracing false views, virtuous and endowed with insight, giving up attachment to sense desires. Indeed, such a person does not come again for repeated becoming, which means the enlightenment. So can one attain enlightenment by practice of metta? So this says... Can. Yeah, no, this says uh, uh, to your practice of metta, these things should be added, not embracing false views. That means ditti, 
ditti has to be eradicated mithya ditti and virtuous and end out with insight so it has to be connected or sort of blended with insight so you can use your metta as the basis or base for you to go to the next level and when it is uh, sort of um, uh, blended or developed to the next level then you can go to nibbana as well so according to this uh, visuddhi magga which is the manual uh, for meditation uh, it says uh, metta's achievement is the highest is the third jhana but according to the metta sutta when one uh, develops it to the next level that is to giving up uh, false views that means the mithyaditi and also virtuous and also end out with insight when one goes to the insight then one yeah. can go to nibbana okay. right so on that note we can uh, conclude the class for the day and uh, i would like to thank you all for joining today and also wish you all a very pleasant evening and good night and take care of yourself stay safe we will meet again next week may you all be well happy and peaceful thank you very much for your all contribution some has sent me thank you thank you bante 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 thank you